in a positive note, Sir Richard Branson's company uh, actually launched people on their first commercial space flight. This is super sick because these guys have been developing this rocket for like 10 years. The company actually just bankrupted. Uh, not Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Galactic. And uh, the, I, I think these are just unrelated, but they I think they, they were in such bad financial position. They had to file for bankruptcy and reorganize, but... They actually went through and did their first full like commercial, commercial flight, flight with a bunch of Italians on board, which is really interesting. There was these Italian guy. I don't know if they're astronauts or whatever, but we'll splice some of this video in here. I'm sure George can pull that off, but the video is actually super cool because once they get up there, the two wings on the outside like rotate and they're just, you know, it's like Italians in space. It's hilarious. Um, this one actually made me really nervous because I... I just didn't want two catastrophic right. sea and space expeditions like, to go right, horribly wrong. That means we're sticking to the land. <laughs> yeah, because people were already memeing it. There were memes like uh, like assisted suicide. Oh my now, God. instead of being Dude, offered for 250K un underwater, you can get it for 400K in space. The big difference, though, that one looks like a short clip. The, the biggest difference is that this was actually tested for like the last i don't know 10 something years like the these guys went through really really rigorous testing to get this to the final wow. stages of course there were some tragedies one of their test flights and test pilots died during the course of this that i remember there might have been more but this one's actually really interesting so the coolest and i'm an aviation nerd so one of the coolest things about Virgin Galactic is that they actually built a fucking spaceport like out in Arizona, Nevada or something. And to launch this thing, a spaceport, like, what, a, like an that? airport for people that oh, are going okay. to space. So the way they did it is they built this gigantic aircraft. It's I think it has the biggest wingspan of any aircraft on Earth. And in order to launch the rocket, they attached this. You see the ship? See, yeah. it's straddled between those two giant fuselages of, of a jet, right? So they built this jet that can go to really high altitude. It's huge. And it launches off that? So watch. What it does is they actually stick the Virgin Galactic rocket. They stick it in the middle. And you're about to see it happen, I'm sure, in a second. But this thing drops straight down. It's just like... Oh, like they release it and it free falls. It free falls and then the <sighs> rocket kicks on. So oh, these guys, oh, oh, oh. they're just... This is like it's the like scariest... It's like skydiving. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And... it's like the scariest roller coaster you could think of. So they drop this thing off and then the rocket kicks on and then boom, up they go. But you know what? Boom. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> How crazy would that feel? But you know what's... Look at them. They just... You could tell. They just almost shit themselves. For all the people that were, like, shitting on the submersible people, it's... Like, you are taking an enormous risk, but you're taking an enormous risk for something incredible, right? Like, this... Ex these people could have all exploded, for all we know, right? And, and they live streamed the whole thing. I can't believe that. They must have had an enormous amount of confidence going into it. Yeah. But... Wow. They got that Branson money. Yeah, but it's like... Dude, these these people had yes, an amazing experience that, you know. But this is, I mean, they're only like a minute into that rocket going and they're almost, in, they're basically in space already. The, these are all people who could afford a $400,000 trip. No, I, I don't know. But they look to me like they were some kind of, you know, either astronaut or pilots or something oh, like so that. This, well, they said it was commercial, so it wasn't. That... I don't. Yeah, I know. Well, they, they said, said like that. the style of the commercial flight, and these yeah, are. I don't know what I don't know what these guys involved in were. I honestly don't know, but they're seemingly like scientists or like I or mean, something. What an incredible experience! And... This is sick. Look how fucking cool that. That is the coolest thing ever. Look at that. They're in space. Look at that. A minute and twenty eight seconds for the time they got, you know launched off that gigantic plane they're in this like super sleek ultra modern thing like i think so that's cool. the this is the coolest experience ever they can actually see the curvature of the earth and the whole thing spins around so they can see it and look they have that mm. they have see those pictures those look like like the evolution of human flight like da vinci's thing and the wright brothers yeah and, yeah but you know what's what 
I think is sad about the response to the sub thing and not to always, not to keep trying to like bring it back to that, but this sort of experience that these people are having is the experience that those people wanted and tried to sign up for. Yeah. And for people who I think people have this view of how they would behave if they had tons of money. And I think it's completely unrealistic. It's sort of a thing where, you know, it's like if, if you were living in the projects and all of a sudden you, you had a $200,000, would you stay living in the projects because that's all you need? Or would you move into a nicer home? Okay. Well, could you, wouldn't you, why not just stay living in the projects and then pay for somebody else to, be able to eat or to you know why why are you not doing all whatever you can within your scope to like yeah. do all these better things right. and it's like that people a- want to live the the best experiences they can and they are free to do that when they make enough money so why are you going to hate on them for that i think the the big takeaway that i saw coming off the comment section of that post was that it, people have this animosity toward Anybody they perceive to be rich. Now, I don't the know what, rich is just a category. Right. Well, I don't know what that be means. Hated. Is the rich somebody who has a hundred thousand dollars or a net worth of a million dollars? Like, what, where people? I don't care. I think a lot of those people line. would just be upset if you had really nice shoes that they couldn't afford. Well, then what is it? Is it that they hate the rich or they don't like people that have more things than them? It's easier to say that everyone doing better than you is uh, a piece of shit than it is to acknowledge your own shortcomings and make a change in your life right but also let, let's let me bring this up like having money doesn't mean you're a good person doesn't mean you're a bad person doesn't mean you're a happy person like i heard this hilarious interview with larry david yesterday it was oh, maybe it was yesterday the day before whatever it was and the guy was asking him back in the 90s it's like okay great so like now you've made all this money you're incredibly wealthy i mean he's you know nine figure net worth millionaire at that point i'm sure and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the part of my brain, he was like pointing at his head that was worried about money. Now that part's gone, but it immediately got filled up with other stuff to worry about. Oh, yeah. And it's like, wow, that is so spot on. Who's the rapper that, said, rapper that said more money, more problems? It's like you're, you just, I mean, your problems just get bigger. I mean, it's probably a Jay-Z quote originally or somebody like him. Yeah, but it's like your pro- – you, it's not like you absolve yourself of problems. Your problems just become different, and then also the fallout of those problems become more catastrophic. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Right? The difference between right. having $1 and no dollars is a dollar. The difference between having a billion dollars and going bankrupt is an enormous change. Yeah, but it's. I think it's just such an unfair thing to broadly criticize somebody because they have more stuff than you. If that's well, dollars or whatever, because like, that's just not a really. It, it's such a reductionist way of disliking something. You don't right. really take into account any of the the, the reality. It, it's of it. the same as saying all poor people are bums. Like you know, right. everyone is has different situations. Everyone's an individual. You can have no money and be a really good person. You can have no money and right. be a bad person. Right. So just to categorically say that, like having this thing suddenly makes you good or bad. So like you can make a value judgment based on the fact that somebody has stuff, like whether more or less stuff. I don't think that's fair. And then, mm-hmm. you know, because if you were to do that, you would also have to be comfortable with the opposite argument, right? So if you were to say, I hate everybody that wears Nikes. Well, it's like, are you also okay with saying you hate everybody that wears Adidas? It's like, you're just making a blanket judgment based on a brand that there's no like real correlation between owning a thing. It's like, imagine you're like a watch guy. Like, man, I hate everybody who wears Rolex. I was like, well, I hate everybody that wears Richard Mill. And it's like, you're both making the equally stupid point because it's just, you don't like them because they're associated with a thing. Yeah. Without, without, any kind of uh you know moment to think of like okay well that's actually a pretty you gotta be a little bit nuanced about this yeah when i I think though also when you reach the status of like a billionaire and everything basically is attainable for you i think a lot of those people do start thinking outside of themselves and whether or not you like like bill gates for example or whoever it may be those people are all taking on initiatives that have some sort of humanitarian 
you know, goal. I mean, most of them have pledged to give all their money away also. That's the the billionaire pledge. Is that? Yeah, they their... I think they call it the giving pledge. Is that? Something like, some, uh, maybe one of the ways we, uh, anyways. Okay. But it's, it's basically that they give uh, uh, the majority of their yearly earnings to some sort of cause, right? That's, yeah, that's like, the idea. Most of it's going to philanthropy, like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, like I think almost all the big ones, except maybe Elon Musk, because I think his humanitarian thing is like getting people to Mars. And sure, he's probably as much as people want to hate that guy. He's probably doing more for the betterment of humanity than any single person out there. I feel like he's pretty beloved, isn't he? Maybe I think so. But I think maybe since the Twitter thing, he, a lot, he, he he's still been stirs up a lot of controversy. I think a lot of people who are very liberal probably have less of. A positive view of him now that he because of all the twitter stuff and him letting a lot of you know right and far right people back on twitter you know that's become a thing and him you know fact yeah. checking biden and, and all, all that stuff right uh but you know i think i think like in the in the space that he's in he's like the hype beast kind of like <laughs> guy Dude, we might see a fight between him and uh zuckerberg did you hear the, those rumors about his mom being like, you're not allowed. Yeah, bro, I also heard rumors that the some ta- part of the Italian government asked him and Zuck to have the fight in the, the Coliseum. Coliseum. I saw that too. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I hope the fight happens. I mean, I hope it's Could UFC you imagine fight. in the Coliseum? How many UFC people does that fight? fit? Not a lot. I mean, it's pretty fucking destroyed. They'd build it up though, right? They'd put like <laughs> they put they they make, make it worth the money. Listen, last time I was there, it didn't look like it was doing great. No. Like it's a ruin. It's not like uh, you know, I don't think it's like UFC ready right now. Yeah, you you get <laughs> they got them Coliseum dollars, those Man, UFC dollars. They got the UFC. They'll get it together. They could throw some UFC money forever sponsor the Coliseum. It'd be a pretty sweet deal, but. Dude, it would become the Coliseum presented by the UFC. <laughs> Can you imagine every time somebody bought an admission ticket to go on like a historic it just tour. UFC on it. <laughs> <laughs> like oh. The gold level sponsor of Roman antiquities and shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. listen, if it could happen anywhere, that would be pretty sick. I feel like they'd that- be both pretty bad fighters. Like maybe, Probably, yeah. maybe, maybe that would be a place for like john jones francis and ganu type fight but here's the thing so they i heard this this argument being posed the question is on what kind of card do you put them on and for example if it is like an Nganu jones yeah are they the coping because that's ridiculous like obviously whatever card they're on zuck and elon have to be the connor would have to the be headliner the card somewhere I feel like they. I feel like all of them would but be who's, okay. Which which professional fighter is going to be on the undercard to two them. guys who have never fought before? Any of them, because it's just it would be the biggest payday of their life. What the fuck would they care? Yeah, if you're everybody on earth if, would tune in to watch for sure, it. I guess. Bucks. Yeah, if they have a, I, I would. If they have a percentage of pay per view. Kidding me? Yeah. Okay. You get Conor McGregor and fucking you know whomever. As the undercard, dude. On if a I had a percentage of pay per view, I'd fight and on that card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be a pretty short fight. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I would. I would just tap out immediately. Uh, yeah, he's a scary dude. I don't blame you. They're all scary dudes. That's what. They, that's what they. <laughs> that's what they do. Yeah, man. I mean, hey, hey, this is super cool. I love watching. I mean, I'm you know, I'm just. I love like aviation stuff. So this to me really tickles my fancy. God, they're all safe and like, shit. That'd be cool to do one day. What a cool success! Yeah, good, good for you, Richard. He's got a he's got a <clears> space <throat> airline. He's got a real airline. He's got a cruise line now. He's doing well. He's just doing the whole airways, spaceways, but waterways. To have, to have like a a real airline that makes money and a space airline that well, I don't think it makes money, but it works. Who's Does gonna be the first one to go to the Earth's core? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no? But it's a cool thought. Yeah, I mean... Straight, we, a train straight through right, North America to China. Why? Who would want to do that? That sucks. All the guys that want to do this. No. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, why would you want to go to... I never mind. Is that... I don't know. Is it faster? I don't, li- I don't know if flying's faster I, shit or not. I'm not, I'm not interested. <laughs> Let's just say that. I don't want to go there. <laughs> I'm going to uh, stay above the earth. You know, we can barely make it down to the bottom of the ocean. 
That's it's a fair point. Yeah. Probably a lot of pressure down there. <laughs> <laughs>